pull up a chair here and uh, let's see. Yeah, we're in the paint there. Bob Weigel, the sound doctor, and again, you know, uh, this instrument's a little bit out of tune. I gotta pull it out, and uh, master oscillator has drifted some for some reason. Got my volume pedal. the vibrato. Uh I bought this thing to play that song on actually. <laughs> it has uh, a, uh, again, a, much like the paraphonic synthesizers we were talking about, it has a top octave uh, synthesizer divide down kind of strategy. And uh, this thing uh, actually has uh, draw bars that tap off these uh, footages. They're arranged so you can get, uh, you know, let's go down here and just add the harmonics so you can hear them hiccuping. <laughs> Enveloped voices, the piano and harpsichord, and they can be short or long decay. Just gives you two preset decays. But anyway, uh, let's slide that down. Oh, notice the, these are not smooth sliders; they're really switches. It gives you four different levels. Now, of course, you know if you've taken any physics that when uh, air vibrates in a length of tubing, for instance, um, it has to, you know, be at atmospheric pressure if it's an open tube at the other end because you're not going to change atmospheric pressure. You've got a large volume of air in the Earth's atmosphere, and uh, you've got a relatively small amount of force um, manipulating the pressure inside of the tube. So um, you have a situation where uh, you have to, uh, to get a harmonic resonance, you have to be at atmospheric pressure at that other end of the tube. So if you're here vibrating the uh, other end with your lips or something, and you're creating a vibration, if that vibration winds up being at some pressure at the other end other than atmospheric, you're going to get a fight. It's going to be hard to to uh, sustain that, uh, you're, you're fighting against atmospheric pressure, basically, <laughs> and you're not going to win. It's just going to sound really weird. I, I can demonstrate that with my, my trumpet here. The um, thing is with this, you know, if you just leave it open, see if I try to slur down it goes and it drops right to another note. It kind of takes my lips along with it. So anyway, same idea when you build a pipe organ, you're resonating uh, that uh, tube and it, it has to fit within a certain range of frequency or it's just not going to resonate uh, in a way that will uh, make a significant amount of sound. So these, uh, of course, as you double the frequency, you uh, double the number of cycles within the tube and you wind up with it hitting on an even beat at the end of the tube again. And so if you were atmospheric pressure with the wave going one cycle, then if you do two cycles, it's also going to hit at the same point of pressure at the end of the tube. So that's why you can do multiples, even multiples, of one time, two time, three times, four times, of course, two times two is four, and uh, so listen to what happens when we go. You hear that? We're actually introducing the octave, because that's a doubling of frequency, and then we're going to introduce another octave. all the way up there. It's two octaves up. That's the forefoot. So we've doubled once, we doubled twice, and we 
double three times, and now we're yet another octave up, and we're eight times the frequency. Now what's at seven, six, five, and three times the frequency? Well, those are those are uh, harmonics that are between octaves, and you'll hear the first one here. What's that? It's up there. That is the five and a third, and it is it's what we call a fifth because it's one, two, three, four, five notes from the root, but it's also the third. One times is halfway between the octave and then four times is the next octave. That's that's the progression of even multiples which will in the same piece of tubing be supported and um, that also our ear also detects that you know and, and it, it, it our mind knows those harmonic interactions because it's it's attached to nature and <laughs> we, it just recognizes those things unless you're certain friends of mine who were tone deaf. But anyway, <laughs> oops, <laughs> excuse me. Um, <laughs> so now we can, it actually, the Farfisa has a, a mix knob that introduces some really kind of uh, neat harmonics all together. It gives you that kind of combo organ sound. Add the percussion. Oh, let me, uh, I got one other thing going on here. It's uh, called Synth Slalom, and it's the only synthesizer feature that was available on this organ in 1971, the year the Mini Moog uh, really started to uh, catch people's attention. Now, Synth Slalom does that. Well, it can do that. There's a range and a timer. Uh, here and so I can turn the range down or up. Now there's some interesting things you can kind of do with that. It's you know it's got to repeat, and uh, again the the paraphonic aspect of this synthesizer is there on the percussion end of things, and so. Let's see if we if we uh, if we hit the repeat. Modulating things going on there. Timer isn't an analog control. It's, it's a stepper also. It just shuts off, or you can't do too much resolution with it. <laughs> or you can probably do more cool stuff with it. But. but yeah, you can modulate through that. And I've done some cooler sounding things with it, but anyway. The synth slalom feature. And also, you can set whether it is uh, a single or multiple trigger, just like those other paraphonic aspects. It's another single, you know, envelope type thing, and so and it's not a smooth envelope. You can hear it actually go. Uh, it's kind of, it's not perfectly smooth. Everything's in steps on this thing, I think. I think it's a grandma's organ syndrome, you know? Grandma liked things that had distinct <laughs> points in them. I don't know. <laughs> Some Hammonds, there's actually a conversion kit you can go to smooth, you know, get rid of your, your click stop things so you can smoothly transition things for smooth transitions in music, which I've always liked myself. I, I'm a big guy on smooth transitions. <laughs> And this thing is just great to play. It feels good. It's got a nice key movement. Uh, Farfisa VIP 345. Very, uh, very uh, difficult to find most of the time, but uh, in good shape especially. This one looks like it got drugged through uh, some carnival action or something. <laughs> but anyway, Bob Weigel, The Sound Doctrine.